When a man says this to you, he's ready for commitment. Now, I've shot dozens of videos on this subject covering all kind of clues to describe if a man is ready for commitment. But I'm going to share with, with you one today that might be obscure, that might give you a good indication if he's actually serious to be in a relationship or not. Now, I'm sure you've experienced men who have been flaky when it comes to the dating process. You've experienced men whose life is in chaos. They're so broken that you probably are there to be his therapist than actually leaning into a healthy, happy relationship, or he just has childhood wounds or adult traumas that makes it very difficult for him to lean into a relationship. Now, why am I bringing this up is because the vast majority of humans today are not actually treating the dating process with a sense of intentionality. See, I've observed that many men as well as women are just seeking some connection, some companionship, some physical intimacy without it being serious, without it being a relationship of going all in. Let me repeat that. This is really important. I've just observed that a lot of people are seeking a casual relationship and not an all-in relationship. And I think the reason why this occurs is that the need for all-in relationships aren't as prevalent as they once were, particularly when women were dependent upon men for financial security. See, these days, women, thankfully, for, for most of you who follow my channel, you don't need a man to financially support you. You can actually choose a relationship based on the merits of the relationship itself without coming at it from a place of dependency. The real problem, though, for those of us in midlife is that a significant percentage of the population that's over 45 and single, I was going to say single and looking for love, but I'm not even sure they're looking for love, is that we have a very high divorce population or a population of people who have had multiple, multiple relationships without any real stick to itness to it. And because of divorce, many people are gun shy to a serious relationship. So there isn't the same need to go all in with another human being. What is all in? I think of all in as being. I'm going to wipe the vomit from your face because you're going through chemotherapy. To me, that's all in. See, today, dating is all about the, the fun experiences. Let's have, it's mostly about entertaining one another. It's all about the fun experience. It's not about being there for the person through thick and thin. Now, ladies, you have a higher propensity to want to be teammates in relationship more so than men. And not to suggest there, are, let me just be clear, there are plenty of men out there who genuinely want a serious relationship. Okay. I just want to be clear. There are plenty. It is raining great men out there. I just want you to stab. I want you to recognize that, but I'm here to offer little clues to determine if he's one of those raining great men, or is he a train wreck and you need to run forest, run away from him. Okay. How do you spot this? Well, as I said earlier, there, when a man's not into you, he will act flaky. He might chase the physical intimacy with you, but shortly thereafter, he has a very flaky behavior. That's rather obvious to see in the early stages. Now, what about those men whose life is in chaos? Now, I know this from a personal experience because shortly after my divorce and for almost a decade, my life was in chaos. And while I was out in the dating marketplace because I wanted some companionship, I wanted some connection, I wanted physical intimacy, but the last thing I was capable of was wanting to commit. Even though cognitively I kept saying to women, I want commitment, I want commitment, I want commitment. But you see, commitment isn't just in the physical sense. There's an emotional commitment we must make to one another. And for many men whose life is in chaos, they don't have the emotional capacity to actually invest in a significant relationship. And so you have to pay attention. Is his life in chaos? Is he, is he gone through a contentious divorce? Is he dealing with a lot of drama in his life? If that's the case, whether you're a man or a woman, it might mean that you're not capable of being into in 
a serious relationship. So what does it take to be ready for a relationship? Folks, it's where your desires for commitment, out, or, and let me reframe that, the desires for commitment outweigh let me do that one more time. Your desire for commitment and a long-term life partner outweigh your fears that come associated with dating. You see, dating comes with it inherent fears, the fear of rejection, the fear of abandonment, the fear of being used. I mean, I'd be shocked if any of you have not felt fear. If you felt fear in the dating process, do me a favor, post a comment below. I'd like to hear what types of fears you've experienced. What's your greatest fear when entering into a new relationship with someone? I think the readiness is when your, your desire for long-term, like for those that are seeking long-term, your desires for commitment, your desire for long-term, for having a long-term mate outweigh your fears. And then how do you know you're ready with a man? It's when your desire for this person outweighs your fears and your misalignments. Let me repeat that. Your, your, your desire for this person outweigh your fears and your misalignment. Here's the thing, folks. Very, it's very rare that two people come together aligned with one another. If you follow my channel, you know I talk about compatibility frequently. I talk about um, I talk about discernment. In fact, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's links below as well. My whole coaching practice is designed to help you be more discerning. And what happens is when you learn the techniques that I teach you, your intuition can start doing the talking for you. My whole coaching is about know thyself so your intuition does the, the the talking for you. Why I'm bringing this up is that when our fears and misalignments, because as I said a moment ago, we are, there, it's rare that two people are perfectly aligned with one another. There's going to be some misalignment. But does your desire for this person outweigh this? That's what an all in relationship is. That's what commitment is. It's when you're, when you're, when you you desire this person more than the misalignment or the fears that might be popping up. I really want to sink this in because casual relationships are the norm. Casual relationships are literally like trying on a pair of shoes, walking around with them for days, and then coming back and returning them. That's what casual relationships are. I call them, I call them placeholder relationships. They're temporary. If you know my chart about the three active people dating, okay, excuse the stain there, but this is not a fact, it's merely an opinion. There are users which represent 20% of the population. There are the spenders that represent 60% of the population. And then the grower builders. Now the users, they seek short-term game. They're the love bombers, the players, the gold diggers, the entitled people. They're only in it for themselves. The spenders, they seek companionship, connection, and sex. But they have no direction. They're uncertain. They're fearful. They don't have their act together. They spend time with you as a placeholder. And the grower builder, they have their act together. They have emotional maturity. They have good relationship skills. How do you spot that grower builder? Well, in a moment, I'm going to tell you what he's going to ask you that gives you a clue to this. Now, some of the ways to, to observe, I just want to say the men who are grower builders, they make you a priority. I mean, they genuinely make you a priority in their life. They actually devote time to wanting to spend time with you. Beyond the early stages of chasing the physical intimacy, folks, whenever you hear men, whenever you hear men love the hunt and men love the chase, men chase physical intimacy. They don't run around going, I want a relationship. I'm chasing a relationship. I've got my bow and arrow and I'm going to go hunt for my relationship. Men don't operate that way. We do chase sex. Look at I'm no listen. I know where I speak. I'm still driven by my little head oftentimes than my big head. I can tell you that as evolved as some of you might think I am, and believe me, I'm not. I'm just a, an hour ahead of most people uh, in in evolution. Maybe not even an hour, two minutes. 
Um, I'm still driven by my little head. I understand male behavior. It's after physical intimacy. Does he continue to make you a priority? Does he actively try to help you in your life? Does he, does he make effort to be a support person in your life? That's a great sign that he's ready for commitment. And most importantly, if he integrates you into his life, if he actually integrates you with his family, he wants to integrate with your family, his friends, his activities, that's a great sign that he's ready for commitment. But now I'm going to share with you something he says, okay, that actually could be a really great sign. And it's the following. Okay, I'm going to open up my smartphone. I'm going to open up my smartphone, click on the following. It's when he says, can I post a picture of us on our social media? Can I post a picture of us on our social media? Okay. Um, when a man actually is willing to post a photograph of you and him, excuse me, a post a picture of us on his social media, that's a great sign that he's serious about you, that he, he's actually beyond the surface. Now, I know this can be a little tricky if you're, if you're familiar with love attachment. I'm going to talk about this for a second because I know this is a little tricky, okay? If you're not familiar with the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, there's a link below to get all the books I recommend. There's a list of books I recommend. They, it, to understand how we attach to another human being, there's basically two types of attachment. There is what's known as secure and insecure. And within the attachment style of insecure, there is anxious, avoidant, and within avoidant, there's fearful or dismissive avoidance. Okay, here's the thing. An anxious guy will post a picture of you rather quickly, but anxious men typically are more commitment oriented because they have a, such a fear of abandonment that they work really hard to make the relationship work. Whether it's a man or woman, the anxious attacher works really hard at making a relationship work. So what, even if they, they don't have to be secure in their attachment to ask you, can I post a picture of you on my social media? An anxious person is most likely going to do it because he wants to declare he wants to declare to the world that you're his. Okay, it's the avoidance that oftentimes don't want to share with the world that they're in relationship with you. Now, this isn't an absolute. This is merely my opinion. But I would say someone who's a fearful avoidant or a dismissive avoidant. Their fear for commitment is so strong. Remember I said their desire to be in relationship with you overcomes their fear or the misalignment, okay? See, this is where a lot of women said, well, if you love me, you would do blank. But it's the fears that caught the, 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 the avoidant attacher is so afraid of closeness, and yet at the same time, they so deeply want to be close to another human being, but their fear outweighs this. This is why I'm a big proponent of human beings doing, if you're not familiar with my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work, I highly recommend reading it, just as a cursory review to be prepared for some of the other exercises at the end of the, or excuse me, some of the other reading material I offer, most avoidants want to be close to another human being, but they're in such fear because they haven't done the inner work to heal their childhood wounds and adult traumas. This is why I continually recommend the book, The Hoffman Process, The Hoffman Process. This is a deep dive into healing our childhood wounds and our adult traumas. So, so to, to, to kind of encapsulate this, Part of your job, ladies, is to, cipher, to kind of decipher, is he an anxious, is he avoidant, or is he in a secure attachment? One of the things I do in my private coaching is that I help women gauge a man's emotional maturity. I think it's rather critically important to ask these serious questions early on. And keep in mind, he's not going to ask you to post a picture until you've, you've been 
together for a little period of time, okay? But it's certainly a great sign that he's ready for commitment or he wants to, if he's ready to declare to the world that he's in a committed relationship with you, that is a great sign that he wants something beyond casual. He wants something serious with you. And isn't this what this is really all about? Because I'm going to come back to this all in. Casual relationships are the norm because most people can test drive a relationship without going all in. I'm, I'm a big proponent. I think couples should be conscious, aware, intentional, and actually be so conscious, aware, and intentional that they're so upfront in the beginning to gain clarity as to whether or not it even makes sense to explore a relationship with another human being. My clients come to me all the time and go, Jonathan, all the exercises you give me, I'm actually doing it with the men. I'm having them filling out all the homework you give me, Jonathan. I'm having the men do it. And I'm getting great responses from men who are those grower and builders because nobody has taught us how to do this. We we it's 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 time for a re evolution of the purpose of a relationship and how to enter into it in a healthy, emotionally healthy way. And so I'm here to just offer some simple guides, some simple tools. So when a guy says to you, can I post a picture of us on your social media? Now, here's, I, I didn't say this earlier. He might be okay with you posting pictures on his social media or excuse me, on your social media. But when he, that, but that's not necessarily a sign he's all in. He just might be, he might, you know, that's like, that might be the avoidance way of like saying, I'm going to be okay with it. But there's still a fear until that person overcomes that fear of declaring you to the world. It's going to be rather difficult to know if he's really capable of a serious commitment or not. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. If he says, can I post a picture of you? Again, this is just one simple way to observe it. If you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos as well. And if you want to connect with me, in the show notes and in the first comment, there's a link to schedule a discovery call with me to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery, to follow me on Instagram, to get all the books I recommend, to join my mailing list is all listed below. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Berg of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love. Because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye.